I'm going to talk a little tonight around social, but actually more broadly, how technology, both hardware, you can see I'm, I'm wearing Google Glass this evening, and the software technologies that go behind it are just changing the way work functions. So it's not just consumer technologies. Here at Google, we're seeing lots of consumer technologies crossing over into the enterprise. And as a friend from Honda was saying before, it's all about how are those consumer technologies changing the way business functions. So let's think, just to kick off, a little around, you know, what work used to be. Certainly I can remember back, my father, for him, work was a place, it was a location. He would get up in the morning, he would go to a specific place, and he would work there. And then at the end of the day, he would come back from there. We got to have dinner with him most nights, which is something I think we've lost, maybe. Or certainly I've lost. Um, but he would come home, and it was a, a thing that he went to. Work was a place. I think for many of us now, work has become a culture, a state of mind, a social experience. So in looking at how technology, both social and different hardware types, the platter of devices that we all have, and the range of different public software systems that we engage with, changes work, it's worthwhile thinking about what we as workers, people in the knowledge economy, are doing with that technology and how we're doing it. And to me, it's become more and more social. It's more and more about how people network, how people engage, how people come together. We've got incredible digital technologies, yet we all choose to come here on a Tuesday evening at the beginning of the month, physically, to get together and talk, have a drink, and engage with each other. So it's about being social both in the physical world and in the digital world. These changes that we see coming, the technologies that we're adopting in the commercial world that are moving over into the world of work, are driving an incredible change. And the change that we see in the customers that we work with is that this traditional world of work, which still exists, you know, go to any large office base somewhere, you'll see these kind of, you know, heavy processes, individuals fighting for the top, a big focus on personal productivity, the kind of me world, you can read the rest as well as I can there, and this slow and responsive IT world. And we see it moving more towards what I would call the future of work, which is far more lightweight, far more open, far more social, being driven by younger people coming into the business, bringing the new technologies with them, bringing these lightweight systems, devices. One interesting thing I talk to customers about is how, you know, for most businesses now, probably the most important, there's probably two critical systems for their business. One is Google itself as a search engine, and the other is Maps to get to places and find things. And they're probably more important than many of the critical internal systems that people would view as, you know, the key thing that IT pushes. So, these technologies, these open technologies being worked in a different way with these new digital natives are really changing the way the world work works. There's a couple of kind of rules that I would put in place there. Things that we try and help our clients do. Things that we encourage all businesses, regardless of which technology providers they, they use, to do and to embrace. I'm not going to go through all of them here. I'll pull out a couple of key ones. One is the modern workplace. So you're here tonight in Google. We invest a lot of money and time and energy in the collaboration spaces, the social spaces that we have inside of the buildings here. We don't encourage people to go and work at home in their bedrooms or their home offices. We encourage them to work wherever's appropriate and when they're in the office spaces to make them as efficient and effective as we can. So we try to create a modern workplace with an amazing social collaboration environment so that they can actually work with great people who want to come in and engage with them and work with them and spark ideas off each other. Other key things I'll pull from this is, you know, to us, this disruption of markets is critical. So if we look at what's happened over the past 10, 15 years, many businesses have gone down, they've kind of, they've not picked up on the new trends, particularly new digital and social trends, and it's caused their businesses to fail. You know, if we look at BlackBerry, great example, 
or even Nokia and the kind of the challenges that Nokia are going through um, at present and being moved across and subsumed into Microsoft. Those businesses didn't respond, even though they should have responded and should have understood those environments fully. So a whole range of things there in terms of the way work is changing. I can sum these up. So consumerization of IT is coming into the enterprise. So consumer technology is driving change in the business. People are trying to work in the same way that they live. So you know, many people will say, well, look, I've got better technology at home than I have in the office. And then they start bringing that technology into the office, and changing the way that they work. Another one is about social and talent. So the talent mobility situation, you know, the fact that people will up and move. Your best people will up and move. They won't necessarily stay loyal for many, many years. And companies are still playing catch up with a lot of these new behaviors for talent. So underlying all of this really is the fact that business, despite the, despite the fact that we can outsource things to, to remote cheap locations, still struggle to hire and find the best people and to actually keep the right people in their business. The number one challenge that any business I talk to has is getting people into their business who are right for the business and who deliver what they're looking for. They can get any number of people who don't fear to or who aren't motivated, but actually the number one thing from a social and a technological perspective that I would encourage you to think about is how do you bring that talent in? How do you socially empower them and engage them inside the workplace and create a culture that keeps them you know, inside of that tribe, which is your company. One of the ways that we try and help people do that is by giving people the right tools inside of the enterprise. So giving them modern tools, team collaboration tools, that allow you to run those fast, agile sprints rather than just personal productivity tools. So those, right, those new tools, those more modern, agile tools that people use at home, really drive a change in behaviours and a change of culture inside of organisations. The way we break that down inside of Google is we help our customers do five things. The first is we help the teams connect. Rather than individuals be personally productive, we help teams connect, we help teams collaborate, we help them share, we help them be social inside the enterprise. We then help them visualize where things are, where people are, where things, where objects are, both internally for logistical perspectives and also externally with their customers. We help them in an agile way build solutions that they can then deliver out onto the internet on Google's Elastic Cloud. We help them find things inside their enterprise. And finally, we help them access everything from any place with the same context, whether it's a browser, you know, a mobile device, a wearable device, or any other type of technology that you might be using. So that's what Google Enterprise does. And many people, many people know Google more for the consumer technologies. The Google en Enterprise side of the house is all about taking those consumer technologies in these five buckets and really helping people adopt them and drive change in their business. And the kind of change that we see when people adopt those technologies falls into one of three buckets. We see people changing their cost base by using these new consumer technologies instead of being stuck in the past with outdated and old technology by leveraging those cl that cloud infrastructure that is there and is ready to go, by leveraging those consumer technologies that help them move people and onboard them far quicker, get them working far quicker. So cost reduction, process improvement is the next piece. So actually using those technologies, a great example there would be a Cardo actually putting out um, maps to show where your grocery deliveries currently are using those technologies to improve their processes, and finally, actually transforming the way that the business is run. Moving it from, I come in in the morning, and I open up an email client, and I start emailing people, to, I come in in the morning, and the key thing I do is start to work on my projects and drive my projects. So just to close off, before Krista throws me from the stage, social is not just the only piece of this. It's very easy to think social is a key piece of marketing and that you should just think of it as a marketing tactic or a marketing channel. It's not. There's a big, big change in the way the world is functioning, the way the world of work is functioning, and that's 
new technologies such as social, it's about new behaviours that we see in people driven by social technologies and new, more open, available technologies out there on the web. And they're all changing the way that business functions. And many businesses over the past 10 years have failed, have gone out of business. You've all got your own examples there. What I'd say to you is, think about the disruption in your own industries. Think about where the future of work is for your industry and what's going to happen. And the final thing I'd leave you with is that actually the biggest risk in your industry, whatever your industry is, is actually not taking risks, not innovating, and not trying to disrupt yourself. Thank you. For more information, visit our website, firsttuesday.org.uk. Don't network, be the network.